Everyone hates Dragon Age Veil God, and rightfully so, it looks painfully DUI, and BioWare is an absolute panic because of it. Extremely bizarre franchise, like it truly is. You've got Origins, which is one thing, then Dragon Age 2 has a pretty damn different tone to Origins. Dragon Age Inquisition, again, different, very different to Origins. And then you've got the stuff on Netflix, you've got all of the extended universe Dragon Age that exists, and a lot of- a Dragon Age anime? I'm assuming this wasn't probably that great, otherwise I would have heard of it. Because if there is a game anime and it's absolutely amazing, like Arcane or Dragon's Blood, you probably have heard about it. Of it's been quite different in tone, and that does mean that one of the greatest traditions of liking Dragon Age for its fan base has uh, kind of struck once again, and that is the reveal of a new Dragon Age, and then everybody piling in from all sides to let everyone know what they think about it. And this time, everyone thinks it's bad. It has definitely been more spiky than most, and there's a clear culprit. It's the trailer. You've seen the trailer. I've seen the trailer. Oh boy, Bellier's trying to not give a valid real opinions because he's most likely afraid this will ruin his re potential relationship with being a game developer. Very cool. It's a pretty awful trailer in my personal opinion. I think it absolutely blows and for me, it basically says don't play this game. Oh, there's actually a disclaimer here that, you know, there are opinions who dislike it. Okay. Game. Things will, though, get a little bit different as we look into all the detail. What can be said, and I think can be agreed on by absolutely everybody, is that the trailer was controversial. It led to a lot of comments. No, not at all. The trailer is not controversial at all. The vast majority of people are looking at this and saying, Wow, yeah, this is bad. It led to a lot of articles, a lot of op-eds. PC Gamer, man, they really decided, ha, oh, this is not our sort of thing. And face value, I agree with them. Like, yeah, that totally looked like the trailer to a modern hero shooter to me. So, let's talk about it, right? The history, the reveal, the backlash, and of course, a bit of the recovery. The level of damage control that I think Bioware's people went into, it's almost admirable. Like, they realized this had blown up in their face, and very rapidly people were spraying. Oh wow, I previously only saw a screenshot of this, and it wasn't that great, but this looks just bad. Oh wow, yeah, the art direction is just horrible. This stands out so much, by the way. Is anyone else just looking at this because it just stand out, stands out so incredibly much? Bringing to action, and we've even had the likes of David Gator leaning in with some opinions. And this all very much includes the fact that this is not the first time that this has happened, even with a trailer for Dragon Age. I'm not talking about Inquisition, I'm not talking about 2. There is a Dragon Age Origins trailer that you're going to see later and is going to give you a chuckle. It very much failed the game that it was selling, unlike us, where I've got today's sponsor. So, spam, unwanted calls, all of that stuff sucks. Very nice. So, cool. Dragon Age Dreadwolf has been re revealed and renamed, right? It's now called Dragon Age The Veil Guard. Everybody, I think, agrees that the V, at the very least, is really awkward. That said, if you remove V from it, you do end up with an abbreviation Dave, which I think is kind of funny. But to recap, Dragon Age what? is an original IP role playing game that Bioware first released in 2009 with the first entry, Dragon Age Origins. Yes, and as we have discussed multiple times, that's exactly the problem. This is a role-playing game that relies heavily on story. And when your trailer is so literally Woken DUI inspired and filled and riddled with that stuff, well, certain... you can't... Wh what do you want to hear more? A story that can talk about anything and any subject? Or a story that cannot talk about certain things because they are bad and hurt their feelings. And you need to talk about something because that's inclusive and cool and woke and whatnot. Well, which one would you rather do? Watch? Play? See? I'm betting the one that has no restriction on its storytelling and capabilities and limits. Not the one that literally has created a checklist of stuff that you need to do, and all of that stuff typically ruins games. 
It was a PC and console based real time with pause combat CRPG, very much in the style of- Also the pause combat is almost completely gone, this is almost a uh, full blown Fortnite action gameplay. Their previous outings, the likes of say Baldur's Gate and Neverwinter Nights. But of course, electronic arts get involved. You see, Dragon Age Origins did pretty well. Then, Dragon Age 2 was rushed into existence. They made Dragon Age 2 in under 18 months, right? And that was by 2011. So yes, within two calendar years, there was a new Dragon Age game out. Dragon Age 2 was pretty damn controversial, especially with the people who loved Origins. Some did like the more, like, action RPG, like, oriented combat, and let's just say the constraints of having the one location and they're pretty i mean they're absolutely ludicrous dev cycle like what ea allowed them it okay so you're telling me dragon age 2 was not the greatest successes of all time but the reason why it didn't succeed is completely different than anything that veil vale god has shown us so far nice it did lead to some innovation, but most people would definitely say it's the black sheep of the franchise. But then you move into Dra Not any longer. Dragon Age Inquisition. And all of this happens in an era of EA owning Bioware that is just absolute goddamn chaos. I mean, even with Dragon Age, like, Dragon Age existed in and around a time to, to sort of almost say, hey, we still do CRPGs, even though, yeah, obviously Mass Effect is turning into more of an action shooter. And this was an insane period for EA. I mean, they mandated that Mass Effect 3 came out basically. Dude, Mass Effect turned out to, sorry, my face is tired two years and two months after Mass Effect 2. You know the way people had like, uh, well, let's just say feedback about the ending of that game? Well, it was pretty much- Yeah, but that was only the ending. I didn't play it, but people were pissed about the ending because it was literally just, oh, here's your options. Now you get three colors. Yeah, people didn't like that, obviously. But did they complain about anything else? As far as I know, well, maybe not everything was perfect, but the ending was the bad part, not everything else, technically. Much done in a weekend because the entire thing was crunch. It was insane. But then we moved from Mass Effect 3 and the Unreal Engine to Frostbite. Frostbite, of course, damages Mass Effect Andromeda. It damages Dragon Age Inquisition and it damages Anthem. So Inquisition launched in 2014. Nothing of anything that you are saying currently makes any sense or even has relevance to why uh, Veilguard vale seems shit. And with that game, the focus basically went to more of a third person, big, big, big zone based sort of open world uh, style, still an action RPG, okay, and definitely and... with quite a lot of MMO DNA there. Now, it's a game that if you kind of play it in the right way, you can have a lot of fun. If you just stay in the hinterlands forever and try to be a completionist, there's a chance you'd be bored to tears. Now, it is a game that sold really well. It was actually the best selling in the series. That all meant that a new Dragon Age was bound to happen but of course this okay so his start of the video is well is real god actually so different from the other dragon ages the first dragon age was different than the second and the blah 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 blah, blah. Oh, okay yeah but they weren't failures they weren't different they still all had seemingly the same tone and whatnot this was a time of absolute sheer hell and chaos. So Dragon Age 4 started development, and thanks to a very long form report in 2019, we know that this game was rebooted multiple times. At one point, it was actually a multiplayer title. I mean, come on, remember the multiplayer push? Like, in fairness, the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer bit, it was actually kind of fun, and some mad bastard did actually spend 14 grand on its loot boxes. But still, this was an error that worried people, especially with Anthem. And in many ways, it was a casualty of Bioware and EA's gambles with Andromeda for Mass Effect, from Bioware's essentially B team, like a sort of a newer formed team, and then of course the Anthem team continually being failed by leadership. Okay, I have a feeling he's trying to kind of run cover from for the Veil God by explaining things that are different over time. But now he's effectively saying, oh yeah, all of the recent BioVid and EA stuff has been absolute trash and everyone knows it. So should, should I feel better about Veilguard now because everything else was bad? I'm so confused. What's the message here, honestly? 
but who couldn't find the fun, even though they had a lot of cool tech and yeah, the robot suits look pretty sweet. So there's a lot of chaos there. Then we move to 20. It's so hard to understand what Bellier means anymore because the last, because not not too long ago he he did like two or maybe even three of uh, video videos where he put out his opinion and said that opinion was complete trash. And everyone was mad at him, and now he's trying to be super neutral. So, you know, no one can say anything bad about him because he doesn't have an actual stance on anything any longer. Uh, it's kind of funny. Man, you should watch some Asmongold videos to perfect, uh, to perfect being, ab well, saying absolutely nothing and being offensive there. 2023, there are layoffs happening across EA, and with those layoffs, Good. many of Bioware's long term staff get fired. And that includes people who are like directly linked to some of like the absolute fan favorite characters in Dragon Age. Hmm, then that's bad. Well, considering considering the typical writer nowadays, okay, I'm gonna spoil a uh, spoil video that's gonna coming on be coming on later on today. It's about Assassins Assassins Creed Shadows. How literal one of the base writers is, well, a woman, a fat one at that, which makes me question: Is it a woman? And her bio literally uh, writes, "Black su wait, how was it? Uh Superior black race dedicated a slam pig. That that's the kind of writing we have to deal with now. And my God, after seeing some of Sh uh, Shadow's gameplay, I think it shows. I, I think it shows. Remember, degeneracy is fine if you keep it keep it hidden. But the moment degeneracy is out in the open, you destroy it. You mock it. You make those people feel bad about themselves for being such horrible human beings that are tempted to destroy the world, society, and everything that you love. Because they will stop at nothing. Nothing to push their shitty agendas and destroy everything you once loved in the name of degeneracy. That very much means that audiences have been primed to be skeptical with Dragon Age 4. It has had tumultuous development, multiple reboots, and really, faith in the company pretty much collapsed. And so it's in that rather sticky position that we get to the reveal. So we had the name change, which I think was a bit confusing. And there was a confirmation, right, of full reveal with 15 minutes of gameplay happening June 11th. And that meant that everybody thought we'd be getting a cinematic trailer in either Summer Games Fest or Xbox or... Well, as you clearly see, we did, and it was horrible. Something like that. But okay, big focus on the characters, the companions, and that does make a hell of a lot of sense. What is the game that has absolutely exploded in the last year that is all about- I'm so surprised that this is not a villain. <laughs> but obviously, white men kill black people. Yay! Yeah. What, what, what great advances in society we are treading here. About the companions, obviously the answer is Baldur's Gate 3. And do remember, an entire generation of players have grown up without the release of a Dragon Age game. There are- By the way, your classical modern age black elf? I don't know what's the deal, but man, making all elves black is some kind of super agenda now. Magic the Gathering is even going, by the way, one step further, trying to make all angels black. It is crazy. Like, why? Why is there such an incredible push to, like, rewrite history that all blacks... No, not all blacks, but all elves have always been black or something like that. That You see that so much in modern games. It's absolutely crazy. Like... When did the when did the cabal come together and just decided that all elves need to be black? I I complete I'm so lost for words at that. There are people who were ten years old when Dragon Age Inquisition came out who are now twenty and they are having this game be marketed at them and they probably didn't play Inquisition when they were 10, which I know is a, a bit spooky and distressing, but time is time, it is what it is. Though the thing is, for that younger audience, what sort of marketing are they used to? And I suppose for a D&D &D adjacent, well, in this case, literally a D&D &D example, um, I'm certainly thinking of the marketing of the D&D &D movie, which is a movie that seemingly landed pretty well with its target audience. Maybe that was a bit of an inspiration for this one. And of course, it's still a Bioware game. Now, Bioware games are not known for their combat, right? What they're known for is world building and companions. So...
That's also again a problem here, judging from the trailer. Doing a reveal trailer all about the companions in light of marketing trends with younger audiences and Baldur's Gate 3, you can see how a bunch of people signed off on that. But of course, we then have the trailer. It gives us a rundown, a brief one, of each of the companions doing something cool and action-related, showing the breath of the world while they get a big flashy name card, just so that 100% you know who that character is. And the thing is, for that audience, like, we did try and find the people who actually liked this trailer, and it basically seems that all of those things worked, and I don't know, now they're all kind of just doing, like, horny fan art of those characters, which doesn't. Yeah, because we like that. We like hot male characters. We like hot female characters. Honestly, again, uh, hot is not even an over-exaggeration. We just want not ugly characters. Is that really too much to ask? Just, just not, just make the character not ugly. Is it so hard to ask? Make fat not exist in games. Is that so much to ask? Does make a lot of sense. The whole thing was narrated by Varric and Scout Harding. They are both, like, they are characters that have been sort of fan favorite characters, and that means that for the truly engaged audience who spent a lot of time with them, especially through the, like, the spin-off media, like the comics, the Netflix anime, novels, that sort of thing, they'll like that. But then to some other people who'd like, okay, um, I'm hearing these voices that I recognize, but why does everything look like a hero shooter to me? That led to people not being comfortable with this, and a general audience- Well, not hero shooter, but Fortnite in particular, more. ...audience revolt, basically hating the stylization of the characters compared to the, perhaps, realistic, they thought, or, you know, remembered models from previous- I don't care about even realistic. Nothing about this is, by the way, realistic. If you got some armor expert or whatever, they would probably be laughing their uh, themselves to the grave looking at this garbage dumpster fire of uh, uh, of what the hell is this supposed to be. But this is just cool. This is just cool design for most people. For me, this, is, this just looks cool. Previous games. Of course, you have a rather over-the-top Bowie anthem. Now, hey, I love some David Bowie, but yeah, I thought it was absolutely shit for this. I thought it was terrible. I thought it blew. The name cards, again, they look like they're a Fortnite thing or an Overwatch thing. And just look at the thumbnail. It's garish and, you know, blah. I mean, it... this is also, uh, I thought this is just an extremely ugly male. Now, this is your patented trans character as much as I understand it because it's supposed to actually be a woman. I thought it's a dude's name, but... Well, again, who honestly cares at this point? Looks like the sort of thumbnail that a YouTuber does to catch your attention, but not really something that says, hey, here's the next... I mean, it's literally on YouTube, so... Your explanation just makes sense. Next entry in your dark fantasy RPG. So really, for a lot of people, this was the proof that they needed, right? That... All of all of the things that could go wrong have went wrong, and the tone has doomed the game. But that's actually not yeah. the first time this sort of thing has happened. I'm going to take you 15 years back in time. So um, yes, we're hello. We're now back in time. Uh, welcome to 15 years ago. Okay. And we have this, and I'm just going to play a little bit of it for you. <laughs> Okay, that's very loud, but this is good. If we ignore the fact that it's extremely loud, uh, look at this. This is gritty, brutal, and not a cartoon. This is a dark fantasy game. Not some kind of a Fortnite hug me, hug me type of stuff. So, the music is bad, the marketing is definitely not great, but you see what you're gonna get in the game. Not this DUI crap. Reminds me of like the the almost dubstep stuff they put in the Warcraft movie where you're like, um, excuse me, what are you doing? This is insane. And this is where I'm going to bring in David Gator. David Gator was the lead writer in this franchise. He basically created the setting. Was? Okay, so uh, again, they're gonna rely on someone's opinion who, <laughs> who wants to keep, keep properly working in an industry, so he's gonna say it's good? Or maybe he has a backbone, let's find out. And responding to this, so somebody basically posted this saying, this is one of the screenshots they released, it looks awesome. 
what's the disparity between this screenshot and the like reveal trailer that we just saw? It looks like two different games. So David Gator responded to that, um, calling out another really bad trailer. He said that's always the case. Dragon Age Origins' first trailer, first couple actually, were made by Blur and couldn't have been further from what the game was actually like. And when you actually, again, look at this trailer, I mean, it is bad, guys. It's bad, and it definitely is not Dragon Age Origins. But that's basically the thing. It's the year 2000. But again, you see in the trailer what the game is going to be about. 2009, Killzone, Arkham Asylum, Infamous. So there is a difference between not liking a trailer, but what you see in the trailer is appealing, but the trailer itself is made poorly. And then there's a poorly made trailer where everything you see in the trailer looks trash and slop. There, there, there's a major difference between those two things. This is an era where mature meant things needed to be dark, things needed to be edgy. Whenever our characters were in a fight and then had a conversation later, they would just statically have a blood decal all over them. It was an era of awkward genital... Ge uh, that is bad. Why? Geometry and, of course, a little bit of the old dry humping when it came to the uh, mature adult scenes. Something that... Okay, is that a problem? It's always been, I mean, kind of hilarious in the Dragon Age series. But the thing with Origins is, it still was campy at times. It had this long-running, sort of nonsensical gag. Enchantment! And there you have it. Enchantment! So, marketing can't <laughs> That's funny. ...target everybody. <laughs> was that supposed to be bad? That's kind of funny. And it's incredibly easy to get marketing wrong. <laughs> and here, all of the stars aligned, they just happened to- Okay, okay, shut up, Billy. Or no one cares about your opinion. You're trying so goddamn hard to say, Oh, what you saw in the trailer wasn't actually bad. <laughs> you, you just misguided. Shut up. No one cares. Anyway, that was Bellier, Dragon Age, Whale God. It's probably going to be an absolute disaster. Let's see how it is when it launches. But uh, judging from the trailer, I'd give it roughly a 2 out of 10 ch uh, chance to succeed and be good. Uh, you know, I, I would say probably... If, if there's a lot of combat and you can ignore the story, I would say there's probably like a 5 out of 10 chance that people are going to call it good. But again, the, the, the chances of it being good are kind of on the lower side considering everything. Anyway, that was Kuzur Sensei. Bye-bye!